Hello. Just kidding. Hi. Uh, my name is Amanda Zaconis and this is History 162, Women and History, Summer 2020. I'm very excited. I really enjoy um, teaching this class. It was great last year and I'm hoping it will be great again this year. Um, it's gonna be a little bit different this year because usually it's it's a seminar discussion class. So I've got some ways that I'm gonna try to make that happen still optionally for people. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, I went to NC State for my undergraduate and graduate school and uh, I majored in history. I studied masculinity during the revolutionary period in Virginia and talked about how like ideas of manhood changed and stuff um, in the early years of the American Revolution, which sounds really, really boring to a lot of people. But the bottom line is I really dig um, gender history, social history. So women's history is uh, near and dear to my heart because it hits all those, you know, gender, social history, you know, like what were regular people doing, all that kind of stuff. Um, and we have a lot of different kinds of women that we're going to talk about that I'm super excited to have this compre comprehensive view of women's history in the United States. And um, I'm excited that you guys are along with me for the ride. So like I said, usually this class meets for five hours in person a week, so two and a half hours twice a week, and we sit around and we talk about stuff, which is, you know, historians' favorite thing to do is to let's just read a bunch of stuff and talk about it. So with the transition to online, this class was originally a seated class, and with everything going on, we're online now. I've found a way to make discussions possible for those who want to do that. So you don't have to do that because I can't require a meeting of any kind in an online class. So that's not what this is. My plan, my current plan, and this may need to change depending on participation rates and all of that, but my current plan is twice a week from like 9.30 to 11.30, I have a Skype meeting. And you guys, if you want to, can pop in um, we have participation in class and participation is like 25% of your grade. So there are a couple ways to do that. If you want to do written discussion boards and not attend the virtual discussions at all, that's absolutely fine. And you can earn your participation points by doing those written discussion boards. If you can and would like to come to the optional virtual class meetings, they'll take place, like I said, 9.30 to 11.30, Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. And if you pop into those, and you stay long enough to contribute twice to the discussion, and it can't just be, yep, or I agree, or I think so too. It needs to be, when we, when we read Juliana Barr, I learned this about this, or she mentions this, and I think that's really interesting because, or you're answering one of my discussion questions. So I'll have discussion questions to kind of help move things along if we're, um, having some trouble having, finding some topics to talk about, but I've got discussion questions for everything. So um, if you can pop in to the discussion, sorry, I had a notification from my son's daycare. If you can pop in to the discussion and stay and contribute twice to that virtual discussion, you do not have to do a written discussion board. And there's a car driving up next door because of course there is. That's the mail truck. Oh, my son's gonna be super jealous. He's three years old and he loves trucks and mail trucks. And now there's video evidence of me experiencing a mail truck without him. Um, anyway, if you pop into the virtual discussions and contribute twice, you've got your participation points for that day. If you do it on the Wednesday, you've got your participation points for that day too. If you can only do it on the Tuesday, but not the Wednesday, you can do the discussion board that's meant for the second half of the week. If you can't or don't want to pop into any of those virtual meetings, there are two discussion boards, one for what each half of the week is discussing, and you can get your participation points that way. So this is designed for people who signed up for this class really, 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 really wanting to have those face-to-face -face discussions. There will not be anything that is crucial to your success in the class that is discussed in the virtual discussion that you can't get from the written discussion or from just simply emailing me a question. Um, I will not record the virtual discussions because that's just two hours of recording stuff. That's a, little, that's a lot uh, to then upload and put on my computer. So 
basically the reason why I want to do this, aside from the fact that I want people who really were interested in having that type of discussion to have the option, again, it's optional. The other reason is because there's so much to talk about in such a short period and the discussion boards don't, don't get through everything. I picked questions from each reading. So you'll talk about each thing a little bit, which is what you would do if you physically came into a class or had a virtual discussion is you yourself as one individual would not comment on every single question or answer every single question that I had, right? You'd comment here and there on some things. That time that you spend preparing and reading and speaking, that gets rolled into preparing and reading and writing instead. If I were to make the written discussion boards the equivalent of an actual full class, instead of, I think it's like 10, 11, 10 or 11 questions per discussion board, and most weeks you'll have two of those, that you can do if you um, don't attend the optional virtual meeting. Instead, it would be like 30 questions per discussion board if I was to give you everything that we would wanna talk about. Um, so you can attend parts or all of a virtual discussion one or two times a week, or you can do entirely written discussion boards. You can do one discussion board, one virtual discussion, um, all virtual discussions, it's entirely up to you. These are just different ways for us to engage with this stuff. Uh, it really is entirely up to you. And if for some reason I start doing this two hour rolling where people can come in and leave if they want to, and then nobody's in there for an hour or nothing's getting discussed and it's not working, then I'll probably change the approach a little bit and offer it as an option in a different way. Maybe it's an hour and a half twice a week and in order to get the participation credits, you need to attend for at least an hour of an hour and a half and contribute twice. I don't know. Just throwing that out there as a second option. It depends on how this first one goes. This is uncharted territory for everyone, as I'm sure you know, and you've been told in so many emails a thousand times, um, that this is new, it's unprecedented, it's unique, right? Which means we're all adapting and doing things differently and trying to make things work as best we can. This is one way that I'm trying to do that. So I really, really hope that something that I've mentioned works for you and your learning style and how you want to take part in discussions in class. Um, if you have, if you do the written discussion board, you also need to comment on at least one other person's post. That is how you get that discussion exchange kind of thing that you would have in a virtual or an in-person discussion. Cause again, even an online class needs to have that interaction element. So, um, that is also part of it. Um, Please review everything in the welcome tab. It's got the syllabus video going through the syllabus, the Blackboard tour video where you'll find everything in Blackboard. It's got um, the syllabus document itself, the reading breakdown, which is the schedule for everything, when things are due, other housekeeping stuff, like you're gonna write an annotated bibliography in the class and there's a handout on how to do that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of stuff in that welcome tab. Check that out first, please which the announcement that this video is a part of mentions that, but this is just me reiterating that please check that out. And then you can move into the assignments tab into week one and start checking out um, what we're gonna talk about Wednesday. So this first week we'll do, because you know, a lot of it's gonna be, a lot of the time you're spending this week is gonna be orienting yourself. There's an introduction discussion, video discussion board. There's a survey that will help me get to know you better. I'm the only one that will be able to see your answers. Your classmates will not be able to see that. So go in knowing that um, just to help me get to know you better and anything you might need to be successful, any help that I can provide there, um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's what that survey is gonna do. So you'll need to complete that. There's that video discussion board. Those are due by Friday. We'll have our first virtual discussion, optional virtual discussion. Wednesday, May 20th from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. You have one written discussion board. That's gonna be due Friday by Friday night. So um, you, things are usually due Friday night by 11.59 p.m. unless I've specified otherwise uh, because it's online. Normally it'd be, if we were meeting on Tuesdays and Wednesdays in person, it would be like due on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. But uh, things are different and so we're doing the online thing where you have the whole week so that's the plan, the draft of the plan, plan 1A, I don't know. Um, so anyway, if you have any questions about any of this or any of the orientation stuff that I've directed you to or the readings or anything, please do not hesitate to reach out. And this last point, this is the most important 
part. I want to emphasize that you will not be tested on any of these readings. If you are reading these things, there's a lot of dense upper level history type stuff we're doing. I'm, I'm, I'm going in with expectations that you all, you, you won't necessarily be able to understand 100% of everything you read right off the bat. Some of these, I need to read it once or twice or three times. But I'm going in with the estimation and the prediction that you want to learn about this stuff, that you're taking this class because you're interested in it, that you want a comprehensive view, you're taking a summer special topic history class, you want to be treated as a special topic history student. And that's what I'm doing. So if you are reading and you are struggling and you're like, I don't know what the heck this is talking about, that's fine. That's okay. Please, you know, highlight that, make a note right at, write a question to talk about in discussion or email me or you know put it in underneath your answers to the discussion questions if you're doing the written put it because I'm gonna look at everybody's answers if you do the written too so you know comment with a question and I'll do my best to answer it the goal is that by the time you leave a virtual discussion or by the time you respond to the questions in the discussion board you will come away with a greater understanding of the readings and the topics than when you started reading it independently. So I'm assigning all these different things. I do not expect you to 100% understand and know exactly what each historian is talking about as you read them. I expect you to try to read them and to do your best and to take notes and to participate in discussion, whether that is virtual or written. And the goal is just to enhance your understanding and grow your knowledge of this topic. So you won't be tested on it. So if you're starting to read something and it's confusing and dense, don't freak out. I promise, you know, we'll, we'll work through it together. We'll talk through it together, whether it's in written form or virtual form, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it and you'll come away with a better understanding. And last year I emphasized that to my students and they were really glad that I did because the first couple weeks, especially the earlier we are, it's, you know, you have like different conceptions of gender between, you know, the Spanish and Native Americans and like all these different ideas and things. And it can be hard to get through and digest all of that, especially because you're doing everything in half the time because it's a summer class, right? So please, 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 um, you know, you start reading for week one, but don't throw in the towel. If it's confusing, make a note of it. Try your best. Get through as much as you can of the readings and we will unpack it and talk through it together. Okay, so, you know, I'm hoping you guys enjoy. We're gonna be talking about all kinds of really cool stuff. Um, I mean, we've got like witches and we've got, you know, like um, lesbians in the Olympics in the mid 20th century. And we've got like, you know, um, women in space. And we've got, I mean, of course, blanking on everything like, civil rights activists, women pushing for birth control, hunger strikes, voter rights, you know, women resisting slavery. I mean, we've got so many cool things to talk about that's gonna be really fun and interesting. So all I ask is that you come as prepared as you can be, you, you know, whether it's to the written or the virtual, you read as much as you can, prepare as best as you can, take notes, highlight things, you know, just be ready to talk about it. And I promise if it's confusing, we'll figure it out together. Okay. And that's really the biggest thing that I wanted to say, because we are going to read a lot and talk about a lot of stuff. And I just wanted to make it clear that it's totally normal and expected that you won't read an article on, you know, gender frontiers in early Mexico and read it and be like, Oh, I completely understand what that's talking about. You're not supposed to. This is your first time entering into this type of topic and this type of reading, right? So I've got you. It's cool. We're going to get through this together. We're going to read some really cool stuff, have some super awesome conversations, either written or virtual, depending on what you can and choose to do. And I'm really excited about it. So like I said, if you are confused about anything, please feel free to contact me. Check out all the stuff in the welcome tab go through those orientation materials and start reading because we got lots of stuff to talk about. 